Welcome to We Build Stuff. I'm Mike, and today I'm going to show you how I made my own mostly scrap metal adjustable workout bench. I built this mostly out of scraps, and I think I spent a total of $40 on it. It works for me, it fits me, and I hope you guys can enjoy seeing the process that I use to make this project. So this project is mostly out of recycled material. I had some cabinets that we took apart. I wanted to turn it into something that I've been wanting for a long time. Now this project cost me about $40 when it was all done. Um, I think I could buy a brand new one for around 200 to 300 online. I've seen used ones going for about 100. However, I was hoping to get something that fit my needs. I wanted something that can fold up and fit in a closet or take up a very small footprint. So I took those into consideration while building this. Now, throughout this project, you're going to see me drilling a small hole and then re-drilling it big. Drill bit slips around. I've got a bit of a shaky table, so I find that helps me get things a little bit more centered. Well, we got some work done today on the custom exercise folding bench thing. These are the sketches I made after seeing a couple pictures on the internet. And the first things I started working on is the main frame, some feet, and this is going to be the main bracket that kind of uh, is in the middle of everything. This is going to allow it to be taken apart, as well as some of these are going to be replaced with pins. So that one's going to have a pin that's going to be able to pull out so that this whole leg or arm or support beam is going to be able to be folded down into itself. The goal is for this whole thing to be able to fit in a closet when we're done. So some of these designs have changed since I started making it. This is my little plan for that bracket. Worked out almost exact. I didn't really have to touch it up very much and those pieces fit in there pretty good. These two on the top, that's going to be going for here. I'm going to call that my butt support and this one's my back support. This one's going to be adjustable as well. I haven't figured out spacing. These are just sketches and that's going to all attach here. And that one's going to go up and down here. Stay tuned. So the pieces that are going to go underneath the comfy foam bench are made out of some old railings. These pieces are going to have a bunch of holes drilled in them and they're going to be welded kind of like a big letter H. Again, drilling small holes, and then a big hole. These are 3 8 because I'm using 3 8 bolts. I do end up having to ream them a little bit oversized though, so I can fit those pins or a bolt through easier. I've got two main parts that I had to use a lathe for. I needed to drill all the way through one of them, again, to put a 3 8 bolt or a pin. And then another one that ends up being a, what I call a stopper block. And you'll see what that looks like soon. So those little grooves there, they're going to fit into my little stoppers that are going to be on one of the diagonal pieces. I love recycling stuff. It's kind of fun to make projects out of something that was used for a completely different purpose at one point in its life. So I didn't show the welding of this, but I did show kind of how I set it up. Looks like a capital I. And there it is, it's welded, or at least tack welded together. That is gonna fit here and slide up and down at specific angles. You really only need four different angles for these kind of workouts, but you'll see later that I have it set for like 12 different types. These two pieces of angle iron are from an old bed frame. 
and these are what are going to attach to the feet of this whole project. They're going to be bolted and held together with, again, 3 8 bolts and nuts. I'm clamping them together so that uh, it's easier to set up my layout. They clamp together, and then you drill them together, and then hopefully they can bolt together. I'm using all these bricks and things to kind of keep it lined up the way that I want it to, adding the level, getting them set up, and then just do a couple tack welds to hold it in place. I'll beef these welds up later, but you don't see that on camera. That will also be adjustable. That way I can do declines. That'll probably go from here to maybe a slight down like that. This one is adjustable. I'm probably not gonna go much higher than that. There'll be stops at certain angles there. There's a gap in between here and here to allow for the hook that is gonna grab these. I need to heat this up and bend it a little bit. I didn't quite weld that on as straight as I want, but that'll stop, 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 like that. So I need some way to adjust what I call the butt part of this project. I'm going to be cutting out two of these long rectangle pieces using a handheld plasma cutter because I like this thick material and it would not fit in a bandsaw and it takes way too long to cut with a zip disc on a grinder. This ends up being a mostly rough cut and then I do kind of grind it down to shape to get them to match perfectly. Now there's going to get a series of holes drilled in this so that when a pin goes through it can hold the seat at special angles all the way from zero or flat up to about 20 degrees up or I think 20 degrees down. Don't quote me on those numbers. I really eyeballed most of this. All 3 8 holes again. And I've got the two pieces clamped together so I can drill the holes exactly mirror image of each other. As I'm building this project, I'm constantly measuring and checking for level and kind of going with it as I build. I don't have everything 100% planned, but as I need a new part, I plan it out individually and add it on. I needed some spacers in here because those pieces were not connected yet, and this will let them both get together at the same time. You see a lot of silver metal and painted metal. In order to weld things together, I have to grind off that paint so I can use it for this project. The adjustable workout bench is coming along. I'm basically designing and building the plans kind of as I go based on my original drawing and then just building one part at a time. There's still a lot of details and grinding to do, but I'll explain the basics. This is able to go up and down just by taking a pin in and out that allowed me to go horizontal or level all the way up to, I think, 20 degrees, which will match this 20 to 30 degrees this one would be able to go horizontal and will be some spots to hold at the bottom all the way to decline all these parts were basically all out of the scrap bin uh, this was old railings that came from something uh, this thing's going to get grinded down to shape so that the seat doesn't hit it but this was the easiest shape to do all my layout first Angle grinding, welding, a lot of measuring. 
this next set of pieces, I don't end up using them. I had an idea in my head that didn't quite work out. It was more the fact that it would have taken so many hours to create each of these little parts. So we can call these the back support adjustable pieces. A really big long word for basically meaning it's going to stop it from falling over. So I took my time, I laid these out, I made paper templates, I did amazing precision measurement, and then I realized it was going to take me so long to build. Now you're still going to see some of this process because for some of you, this might work and you want to spend so long taking your time to build. I ended up getting to use a CNC plasma cutter to build a similar design. Now, while I love using a grinder and all these power tools, it gets a little bit tedious. It did make it look really nice. I used a one inch round piece of steel with a one inch round sanding, grinding disc thing that fit in my air tool. And then I changed my mind and decided to program it into AutoCAD with one long piece. Now, we recently got a fast cut CNC plasma cutter. This thing is phenomenal and it has changed the way we work in the classroom. I have tons of videos on my channel showing it in use. So this was actually the first week I ever used it. I am not releasing this video until about a year after filming it. But it worked pretty good for my first try. Now it does make a mistake when it's cutting, but the final version you cannot tell. I had some overlapping lines in my AutoCAD design and it tried to cut them out twice. And not knowing how to use this machine that great, I had no idea that it was going to happen. I'm just happy that the final version worked and I didn't have to waste any material. This stuff cost about three or four dollars per foot. So this plasma cutter, it is currently running a 45 amp tip and I'm cutting eighth inch or 10 gauge steel. That's about the max that this little tip can handle doing nice smooth cuts. I've recently upgraded to a 65 amp tip and it cuts this stuff like butter. Now while these designs look really cool, they're kind of dangerous. And uh, when I take this home to work with it, I end up putting pool noodles on it and it makes it look a little bit safer. Kind of reminds me of Batman. So here's a good example of showing the uh, double outline cut. It does this L-shaped cut, stops, and then it starts again. I've since learned my lesson with all my designs and I really double check and I can see these little issues that happen, especially when I'm helping students with cutting out their own designs and projects. My original plan was to have that stop block fit perfect and guess what? It fit pretty darn perfect. I was so thrilled with how this turned out. Now I'm gonna have to angle grind and make shapes and all that here anyways. And I thought maybe I can make this look a little bit cooler. I have my original set of plans here. So I sketched it out in AutoCAD. Sketched it out. Now I'm gonna go over here and try to make it look cooler than just a big rectangle. I'm gonna add some curves and try to get some neat shapes kind of around this so it looks like kind of a cool bracket. And then we'll cut it out on the CNC because why not? I learned how to start using AutoCAD probably 15 years ago. And while I'm by no means a proficient master at it, I know how to make it do what I need to, which is usually lines and arcs and circles. I've found a way that works for me to kind of get to my end goal. And when I don't know something, I look it up on the internet or on the AutoCAD help website. I was really happy with the shape that I was able to get after this instead of just an ugly rectangle. It did take me of three different versions to get one that I liked. So I did waste a little bit of material. However, I learned from it and I can use that as a learning experience to pass on to students.
What you're seeing here, I believe, is version two of my drawing. This one almost worked. There ended up being one mistake where it lost ground while it was cutting. You'll see that in its second cut. One of the other things I've learned about this plasma cutter is if I want it to make an exact 3 8 hole, I have to program my uh, drawing to actually be bigger than 3 8 or whatever the number is. All right, there's one. I'm not really worried about that little top. I'd be grinding that over anyways, but that's pretty close. Not bad. Now here you're gonna see me make a little mistake. And as I'm still learning this machine, there's things that I'm trying to figure out with layout and how to set the machine up so it works. See that? It fired, but it didn't keep cutting. Oh, we lost the arc on that part. After you do your cut, it's never going to be perfectly smooth unless you set your machine up perfect. We always end up getting a little bit of what is called dross. And you'll see an image of that coming up on the screen soon. That's where as it shoots through with the fire and the air and whatever, it basically melts metal underneath and it keeps it bumpy. So we just hit it with a grinder and smooth it out. I like using a flat disc because it sands it at the same time. So before I weld it on permanently, I want to double check that at least one spot is going to give it exactly flat. The other ones is going to be at the very bottom where it can lay all the way folded up. Everything that goes higher is pretty much a bonus and it goes all the way to 90, which I'm probably never going to sit at. Layout tools are cool, but I end up using my fingers and kind of feeling, does it feel flat? Does it feel lined up? And I kind of just trust how it feels and then weld it on. It's going to be straight, so I'm happy. All right, on to version three. I had to move the location of some of the holes because they didn't quite line up with everything else that I had made. But this one finally did. And my holes ended up turning out better. I made them slightly bigger than 3 8 I believe I still drilled them out a little to make sure. But the cuts are cleaner. I changed the speed of the machine so that it wasn't running as fast. And it gave a way smoother cut. You can also see where it goes in and out. That small U-shape underneath it. That's the lead-in and lead-out that you can program in in the machine. So I've lost track of how many times I've taken it apart and put it back together, but I keep making those little improvements as I go, and if I was to build this again, I probably wouldn't have to do this quite as many times. So it's pretty close to the, my original plans, but you know, there's that 10% of where there's little changes and I have to customize it as I go. I don't plan on building another one for myself, but I hope that a student is able to follow this and make something that works for them out of maybe similar materials. When I end up tightening things together, anything that needs a little bit of a pivot action or some movement, I try to, you know, stick a plain card in between it and I go for that thickness so there is a little bit of wobble, but nothing noticeable. A lot of the time I'll be using a 3 8 bar just as a placeholder because, you know, I haven't gone shopping for the right length of bolt yet. I could be making my own and threading stuff. However, I can get a bolt for like 50 cents. So I uh, get them when I can as I build this project.
This piece needed a little bit of work in order for it to fit right. It was a little bit too high, and adding rounded edges not just looks good, but helps it function a little bit better so it doesn't rub against other parts. I ended up using the grinder, I used the sander, and later on I have to use the milling machine to actually make it a little thinner. I believe it was a quarter inch, and I needed to bring it down about a sixteenth, so I trimmed that down. So these look really cool, but yeah, they were way too sharp. I cut myself so many times during the assembly on this, so I thought, let's make it just a little bit less sharp. I still put a pool noodle over top of these when I'm not using them at home. So I'm pretty happy with the design. It fits me. I'm still planning out the width of the plywood and the foam that's going to be going on it. But then one thing I noticed was this was too long. Depending on the way that I sit, due to my height, my legs were hitting it, and I need to make some changes. These are old shelving from a cabinet that I took apart. So I got these for free. Again, I enjoy salvaging stuff. And regardless of if they're dirty or not, you're not going to see it, because it's going to be covered in foam and then wrapped up in vinyl. Now these square shapes are kind of boring. So let's make them look a little bit more exciting with some angles and some curves. I just use basic layout tools, ruler, tape measure, and a couple circle templates to get some nice shapes on here. Now, if you don't have giant stationary equipment to do a lot of this stuff, you could probably cut all of your wood out with a jigsaw. I show that in one of my other YouTube videos where I build an arcade cabinet using what I call mostly basic woodworking tools. You don't necessarily have to have all these giant ones. There's a lot of handheld equivalents or complete hand tools to make cuts like this. Maybe it would be a bit more sandy. So these speed up the process. This looks a lot fancier. Now I do end up changing the butt support. The rectangle shape was not quite working for me and it ended up hitting my thighs depending on the way that I would sit on it. I don't show it on camera, but I do trim it and you'll see the cool shape later that ended up being really comfortable to sit on. So now I need to figure out how I'm mounting the wood to the metal. I'll be using T-nuts, which you may have seen in my arcade videos, to hold my metal to the wood. I believe I used quarter inch UNC or quarter inch coarse bolts to do this and then you just find the matching tina I've over drilled those holes by a little bit so that the bolts can fit in with a little bit of looseness once it's all tightened down it ain't gonna move so I gotta figure out how to make this t-nut fit it's a quarter inch bolt but the outside shaft of the t-nut looked to be about 0.27 or 0.28 so I'm gonna over drill those by a bit they're going to be held in just fine by the teeth after you hit it with a hammer. Throw in a washer and just makes it look more professional, I guess. There, so I still got my rectangle seat. I'll be changing that later in the video. Basically do the exact same thing for the backrest. I ended up breaking my drill bit, so I had to use a step drill to finish the job. Again, more assembly, disassembly. It was fun. So I got some foam, glued it on, cut everything down to the right shape, and I had some old vinyl that, again, I didn't pay for this. It had been sitting in a box for probably five years grab my handy staple gun and then figured out how to attach it. If I had more time, I would have loved to take this to a sewing machine and cut out a nice upholstery thing, but its only purpose is to make it comfortable to work out. I want to make it look nice for me, so again, adding nice curves, shapes, so that when you do look at it, it does look decent. Maybe not professional, but it works for me. I 
I did my best to make the folds or what you might call pleats look at least even. It's not as professional as it could be, but at least I tried, right? I used an X-Acto to cut out uh, where my bolts are going to go. It would have been nice to have some leather working tools to like punch a hole in it, but you can't see it. It's all going to be hidden. This bottom cover was made up as I went, so I did a little bit of drawing, cut it out. Did a little bit more drawing, and then cut it out until I was happy with the way it fit. There's no plans for these when I literally just sat down and did it. This is the part where people on YouTube make fun of me doing it the wrong way. And guess what? I don't care. How do you do it the wrong way? I don't know. I don't know the right way to do this. I'll make it work. There's always someone on the internet that's gonna be like, you're doing it wrong. So this thing is basically complete. A couple little things that I might want to customize, make it look a little nice. I think it's time to add some paint. Not bad for making my first workout bench that looks like an ironing board. All right, it's not my prettiest work, but I just finished some basic upholstery, if you can call it that, with some old vinyl we had, stapled it to three quarter inch ply, and some two inch foam, and this whole thing is adjustable. So this is part of that butt adjustment part, and it was just a little bit too thick. It was rubbing against the frame when it was going up and down. Ooh, let's admire that slow motion. That looks a lot better. So I got a space in there that keeps it together. It goes up and down easily. And now I'm gonna show you how it all kind of folds up. Now you could add another pin to make it fold up more. However, that only takes up about a foot or five foot on the ground and it fits perfectly where I want it to. Everything flat packs nicely, just like a Swedish furniture brand, kind of. Did a couple coats of black spray paint. It makes it look nice and it hides the old paint for the most part. The black looks really nice with the red vinyl, I think, as well. And then there's the silver accents from the fasteners, nuts and bolts, and custom hitch pins that I built. So it's final assembly. I'm finally putting it together, hopefully for the last time. Not really being that careful if I scratch it. I got a couple layers of paint. It's a good thing I have an impact socket there. <laughs> the first one I could find in the pile. And there it is. It's done. It works. And it works great. Now, I'm not doing, you know, 400 pound bench presses with this thing. It's not really built for that. And I don't think I'd really want to test its durability. However, it's going to do just fine for handheld tools. Sorry, did I say tools? I meant weights. Let's find something a little bit easier to work with. There are so many exercises you can use with this. I think I just show like three things because that's what I was on my mind. It clearly was dressed to work out with my steel toe boots, my jeans, my keys dangling from me, and a shirt that I'd been welding in for about three hours. calisthenics with this thing I guess. Is that what you call it? Body weight exercises? Something like that. I can customize this thing later if I want to and add more hardware if I feel like it just by drilling holes and bolting them on. But so far this thing has been fantastic. I'm very happy with the way it's worked. So thanks so much for watching. That was how I made my own workout bench using mostly scrap materials. I think I paid about 40 bucks total for this thing. Uh, and most of the cost was foam and some fasteners. I was able to source the metal almost for free going through a scrap bin that basically just disassembled other projects and stuff that were no longer in use. There are many ways to build projects like this, but this is the way I did it. I hope somebody can find some inspiration in making their own stuff. I've got a couple pictures on my website that show screenshots of the plans that I made. Most of the plans are kind of simple to follow. I'm not exactly sure. It really depends on your building skill and ability to read stuff. But 
they worked for me. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Leave comments if there's anything that you would try to build for yourself uh, and try to help out others. Have a great day.